everyone and welcome back to Etalan. For today's video, I decided to make a follow-up to my Halloween doll, which was Azumi from Uzumaki, and create a doll based on the highly requested Tomio from Junji Ito's famous horror manga by the same name. As a general disclaimer, I will be bringing up spoilers for context, so I apologise to those who haven't read it, but I also implore you to read the manga, it's just fantastic. Throughout the manga, Tomia is depicted to have regenerative abilities, creating clones as the series progresses. This gives me countless Tomias to choose from, and after reading and rereading the manga, I stuck with Ayaka Tomie from the chapter Old and Ugly. To start off this custom, I'll be using a Draculaura Monster High doll as a base. I remove her factory hair and paint with 100% acetone. This was by far my most requested custom, which makes me feel so chuffed that people actually enjoy horror-based manga customs, as I really just can't get enough of horror-based manga, it's definitely one of my favourite medias. Before I begin the face up, I'll be spraying the doll with Citadel Wraithbone spray to mute out any pink within her skin. And once that's dry, I'll do two coats of Mrs. Super Clear Matte Varnish as a base. For this doll, I'll be using a mixture of white, grey, but mostly black from the Faber Castell Albrecht Dura watercolour series. I think out of all the Tomiers, I chose Ayaka because I really felt like it was the perfect display of Tomie as a character, especially in the scene referred. In the scene, she's attacked by someone hired by a clone of herself, as all individual Tomiers believe they are the true Tomie, thus seek to kill all others. You know, if they're not killed by their classmates or any other man ever, I guess. <laughs> For details, I'll be using Games Workshop Citadel paints, as well as Vallejo White. With Wargamer brushes, I'll build dimension in her irises, as the eyes in this particular frame is so important as it shows the mental shift and disappearance of humanity in a way. Definitely up to reader's interpretation, however, but, you know, eyes are important. Let's leave it at that.
To start on with her hair, I'll be using craft glue and synthetic wefted hair as always. In retrospect, I definitely changed doing a reroute, but in full transparency, I have no idea how to do one. So wefted hair it is. With pins, I'll pin the hair all the way to the top of the head, and with the hair that covers her face, I'll flip it back as a mock hairline. And with painted ribbon, I'll attach her headband. So for clothes, it was quite a kerfuffle as I made clothes for the scene, which was a white pencil skirt and gray colored top thing. And in all honesty, it worked in theory, but in execution, it looked really goofy. So instead off camera, I created a black Wendy collar dress with white sleeves as it's quite similar in theme to all of her clothes throughout the series. I'll also be creating the highlights with white paint to match the manga theme. And once this is all done, I'll attach her head and she's finished. Thank you so much for watching, let me know what you think about her in the comments below, as well if you have any other suggestions of dolls you'd like to see me make next. I apologise for the raspiness in my voice, there's been quite a lot of fires here in Australia so everyone seems to have a cough here as well as myself. As always, if you'd like to see more of this doll or any of my other dolls, make sure to subscribe and check out my Instagram at Edelon.